Yo, hello everybody, this is Daniel bringing you guys another Packet Tracer walkthrough video, and today we're going to be going over to Module 6, uh, Skills Integration Challenge, or the VLAN Skills Integration Challenge, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so, not really much to do here compared to some of the other challenges. Fairly straightforward stuff, but, um, I guess I'm just going to go over it anyway. So, we're only configuring S3, right? can't access these two devices and what else you have to configure IP addressing and default gateway configuration according to this obviously only for s3 because everything else is configured including the PCs by the way it doesn't say that the PCs are configured I think but they are or at least we don't have to do anything to them and you know that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and go into s3 here CLI notice those native land mismatch thingies We'll get to that in a second, but for now, let's go ahead and um, go for IP address configuration, I guess, first. Go in sequential order, so just go into interface uh, mode for the VLANs and type in IP address of S3, which is 172.31.88.4. So this is how you would assign um, an IP address to some kind of management interface which is actually what this interface is for. It's for management, so you would SSH into this IP and such. Um, and then default gateway configuration, so IP default gateway, 172.31.88.1, and that is listed here. So yeah, that configures your default gateway. Um, so create VLAN, so let's go ahead and just create and name them right off the bat. So to get into VLAN configuration mode, just VLAN and then the number, and then just the name command will you know, name the VLAN, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, all that real quickly. Just looking at this column right here, nothing too complicated. Oh shoot, there's no VLAN 40 uh, name management. It's not really needed to name the trunk, uh, the, the management or native, I think. It's like not as important, I guess, but whatever. I don't even know what I'm saying. It is good to name them, but it's not as necessary to name them as the um, other three, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say, because you know you kind of already know that since it says IP, it's the management, and the native is just the native, right? There's not going to be anything assigned to it. Um, sign flan native, uh, we have to sign access flans first, so into range F0, 1 through 6. I'm just going to go from the lowest interface range to the highest interface range, and this is going to be... I'm pretty sure you can just bypass having to run switch port mode access by um, using switch port access VLAN, whatever, but you know, I like doing both of those commands, so I will. And I did not type a 7. Switch mode access, switch access VLAN 10, and then into range S13 through 20. Um, and then we're going to assign this one to VLAN 20, so switch mode access and switch access VLAN 20. That should be it for the access VLANs. We don't have to assign in VLAN 988, obviously, to anything because it has an IP address and it's a management interface. It's not really going to be assigned to any other interfaces because it wouldn't really make sense to assign a layer 3, technically a layer 3 interface to um, these other ports. Um, and obviously, we're not also not assigning our trunk to any interfaces, right? Well, we are assigning our trunk to this interface, but not necessarily range of interfaces. Unless we had multiple trunk links, in which case we would. But in this case, in this lab, we're only having one trunk link. This is only going to be assigned to one interface. Management, not going to be assigned to anything. So assign native VLAN 99 to trunk port disable DTP. So the native VLAN should go on port G01, as you could, G 02, excuse me, um, as you could probably tell by all these annoying messages. So let's go ahead and run a switch port mode trunk, even though that's probably already on here. Actually, it wasn't. Okay, so switch. And we want to switch port trunk native VLAN. And then the name, the number of the native VLAN, which is 99. And it will say port consistently restored. And now we are restricting it to only allow 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99. So that is going to be a switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10, 20, 30, 88, 99. That's five. And. Use VLAN 99 as native VLAN on trunk port. So we're going to do a switch port trunk native VLAN 99. 
I think we already did that though. Oh no, I didn't. Okay. Well, we did it now. And then from here on out, it's like basically simple switch security. So encrypted password is or secret encrypted secret password. Uh, so that's your enable secret. It's a secret. Is it really though? Is the question. Uh, console password have let me in. A side note is that I don't know if they scored this, but if you want to configure a password for something, you might as well just configure. Sorry, let me in. Always run the login command with it because otherwise the password command won't do anything. And then line v2y 015 covering all those v2y lines. Then go to password and csgo. CSGO. And then log in. Encrypt your plain text password. So that's just going to be a service password encryption. Not the best way. Remember that encryption is not the optimal way of securing passwords because you can easily reverse it. Hashing with MD5, like what Enable Secret uses, I believe, is the more preferable option. So you usually want to um, use secret keywords instead of password keywords if you can. Um, then bear MOTD message. Authorized access only. Oops. It would help if I can type correctly. Disable unused ports. All right. So the thing about this is that um, even though you're assigning these ports to VLANs, they're actually not connected to any PCs here. So you still have to disable them anyway. And then there's those um, extra interfaces that come after F020. And then there's also a G01 interface, I think, that's not connected to anything. So you also have to disable those as well. Don't believe me. Let's go ahead and run a show run begin interface command. So what this will do is it'll just hop to the place where interface first shows up in sh the running config, which is you know where we kind of want to be. So we got all our signed interfaces here. And then after F020 knows how we have um, four unassigned fast internets and then one unassigned gigabit. So we want to disable all of these in addition to anything that's not being used besides these three ports. So I'm going to take care of all of this in one command. So I'm going to go F01 through five because we're using F06, F07 through 10 because we're using F011 and F012 through 17 because we're using F018 and then F019 through 24 comma G01 and we will shut down all of these. And just like that, we have <laughs> bypassed annoying um, way if we had to no shut all of these one by one or if we only had to shut this down one interface range at a time It'd be pretty tedious, but we can get all of that done with one command So I'll show that again. This is the command you'd use to access all of these interfaces and shut them down Interface range is a very very handy command Okay, and Configure port security on f06. All right, so let's just go into interface for f interface configuration mode for f06 uh, first thing you gotta do is enable port security, otherwise you're not gonna be able to run any of the commands listed below. And you also gotta configure an access mode too, but we did that before, so we're good there. Uh, only two unique devices are allowed to access the port, so let me just go ahead and run a maximum two here. And that will only allow two unique devices to access the port. Learn MAC addresses are added to the running configuration, so we're looking for a sticky secure MAC address storage. Sticky secure MAC address storage, yes, I think that's correct. So. MAC address sticky and secure information interface. So a notification is sent when there is a violation, but the port is not disabled. Um, so violation restrict because restrict will send a notification, but it will not disable the port shutdown will send a violation and the port will be disabled and protect will not send a violation and will not disable the port. It will just keep on dropping things until um, it'll just keep on dropping anything that's not allowed, I think. Anything that's not allowed, or from devices that um, aren't allowed. Restrict will notify you when it drops those things, and shutdown will just shut down the interface entirely. Uh, so we screwed up. I screwed up on a few things at the very least, because this is definitely not 100%. Let me look at this. Oh, yeah. Whoops. I forgot to negotiate. Yeah, so it told us up here that we had to disable DDP if and basically that just means run switch port no negotiate but I, I forgot about that so that's my bad um, interface F0, no it's not F06 it's G02 and we're gonna run switch port no negotiate basically this will 
um, say you're not negotiating with anything that's dynamic auto or um, dynamic desirable. So if you guys don't know what those um, switch part modes are, I recommend you look at that. But essentially, it's not going to um, form a trunk with anything else besides another interface that is explicitly configured as a trunk. So that's what no negotiate does, basically for additional security. So um, hacker can't like plug in their PC and like pretend they're a trunk when they're not really. So if they can pretend they're a trunk, they can see all of the VLAN um, tagged packets, right? Or actually, it might not. Yeah. At least, at the very least, they can see all the traffic that's coming over the trunk, right? Because, you know, all, kind of all the loud traffic that we set here is going to be allowed over that G02 interface. If a hacker were to plug in their PC here and pretend to be S1, they could tap into all of those packets and see stuff they weren't supposed to. Especially the um, native traffic, the untired traffic, which is definitely what we don't want them to see. So, yeah, that's about it for this module and this lab, I should say. So, yeah. Um, pretty simple one, I feel, pretty fast. So if you guys got any questions, you can ask me. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.